Okay, we should be live. Let's get this going. Close that one out there. Get rid of our background. We'll do a new layer. I like to start with a fill color for the background. I can easily adjust that to my liking. I kind of see it happen on the fly when I'm when I want to make a change. Okay, so we got a layer pulled up here. Um, let's see, maybe we'll go with the heavy drag or the sinful onion number one. Those are nice little sketchy brushes. I don't know what we're doing today. Always do it on the fly to figure it out as we go. But the, I think the important part is that you get something down quickly that you can start responding to. I've had this conversation before, and maybe, you know, on the channel as well. Um, but the idea that you've got an image in your head and you're going to extract it, you know, that's okay and everything. But I find that more often there's not a lot going on up there. It's much easier to put something down on the canvas so that you're not hemming and hauling and twirling your mustache and thinking, what's going on here? Instead, you, you can uh, start to make executive decisions. Say, mm -mm, no, none of that. That's no good. Don't like that. Get rid of that. Yeah, okay, that's working. More, do more of that. Less of this, you know, that sort of thing. It's the response. You're responding rather than uh, rather than designing. A, let's see, putting a, a plan together, right? Now, I think there is a, a place for design where you uh, have to kind of think something through and build a blueprint. But often what will happen is you will build that blueprint, get started, and find out that you are wrong. That in the real world, once that thing that's in your head hits the paper, it doesn't actually work the way you thought it would. And so, anyway, that ends up being a, that ends up being a thing. So, I'm going to get rid of these little bits here. Okay. Starting to repeat a motif there. That's fine. Motifs are good. But, um, I'm going to turn this into a, a more, I don't know, a little less strange forms there near the top of this. You know, I'm thinking of this, of course, I think as a structure. Um, and so I want to get this in there in a way that's going to um, look believable and not just completely out in space. And we do things that are out in space, that's for sure, but... Gotta feel like you could reach out and touch it. Okay. I feel myself slowing down and trying to like work this out. You know what? I don't want to do that. I want to keep plowing through. Ask myself, do I like that shape? The answer is no. So what are we going to do? We're going 
get to work. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make this thing work. Or leave it on the altar. Make a new one. down we'll make a few more but we don't need that so large all right so on that motif let's maybe do one that's getting reckless but that's the plan just be sometimes you use the word irreverent towards your own work you know gotta keep stop treating it like it's a, like it's a baby that you gotta be gentle with it's not it's a question of whether or not this thing is proving itself worthy to be put out there to the world as a piece of art worth, worth thinking about, considering. You make something, you put it out there. You know, it's a conversation with the world. And a lot of times that's just practice, you know. It's not like it's got to be perfect or whatever. But, um, I mean, you are kind of making a statement by virtue of putting something out there. You're saying, hey, you know what? I think this and my thoughts about this thing I, I don't know I think it's worthy I think it's worth showing people okay just gonna get those people on board with you or or not so anyway to me I think um, it's less about uh, gotta let that ego go and say that you know, this thing is worthwhile because I made it. Um, I mean, you can make things and you don't have to fall in love with them or think that they're the best thing ever. Um, 
but if you're going to put it out there and share it, I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm not trying to be an elitist here. I'm just saying this whole process is not like, uh, hey, it's just pure gold because I made it. It's uh, it's you trying to dig for that gold. You're trying to find something that's worth um, sharing as an idea and as a, uh, kind of a presentation, I guess. I don't fully believe that. You know, I'm saying this, but I'm like, oh, I'm hearing it come out of my mouth. I'm like, mm, it's, it's not quite exactly how I mean it, but I do think that there's, um, I don't know, I'm getting at something. Give me some time. we got plenty of time tonight. I'm going to be here for way too long, as usual. And uh, we'll see. We will see if uh, I can ever make sense of what I'm trying to say right now. You're trying to find the beauty in things, the wonder and the the big idea, the thing that's like, this is why I'm interested in such a thing. This is what makes it cool or exciting or scary or whatever it is that you're going for. And, uh, I'm just saying that it takes work. It takes a little bit of coaxing to pull it out, find it. It's not just there by default. This is going to be like a bell tower type thing. Could make that, could open that space up there. Okay, you go over there. Oh boy. It's not even the same layer. Who's running this show? the mess but you know it's I don't know what I'm thinking right now Should be surprised by this motif. Domes. My favorite. Don't knock it, it's awesome.
He's about to lose his mind here. But what can you do? Maybe flatten these out a little bit. These are a little too excessive. Do the uh, Emperor Palpatine leave us away? Guards, leave us. Just have this absolute disregard for this sketch. That's the spirit. to get the old, uh, you know, that thing, the, uh, what do they call that? There's a word for it. Smudge brush? Yeah, we're going to have to get that out. It is the only way. The reason I'm doing the smudge brush here is I want this counter change where this where one you know bright goes into a dark and vice versa. They become the opposite.
wee oui, wee. Oui. Wee oui, wee, oui. what is this man talking about? Three little piggies up in here, what's going on? Three little piggies. Not on my channel. Sorry, dropped my guard. Let that one slip through. Okay, next. Away with you. Leave us. Actually doesn't feel as good as I thought it would. Talking down to my own <laughs> creations. Excuse me. And this one. <coughs> excuse me. Is not done. It needs more. I think I just didn't feel like doing it. That's a bad place to be. Got to power through that. Let's square this baby off. Figure out what's what. That's the uh, technical lingo. I can just figure out what's what up in here. Make it, make it, make it better. Make your paintings not suck. That was a. Um, my child, I know I've said this before, I think she was four years old. We were working on knock-knock jokes. And she says, knock-knock. I say, who's there? She says, uh, you're painting. And she looked at one of my paintings on the wall. And I said, you're painting who? And she said, make your paintings better. And it hurt. her because she was right <clears throat> oh we got uh, Donis in the chat welcome see here I was all alone just talking to myself <laughs> telling stories for the future generations let's see well, welcome. I hope you're doing well. We gotta we gotta chat sometime, see how your work is coming along. I you know I actually I'm just gonna be frank, I forgot where we left off with um we were talking about um this class that you had done, I think it was Walter Water Talp. Uh, sorry if I mispronounced that. Um, I've only like seen the name. Uh, I haven't heard it spoken. Um, so you you did this class, and then um, you showed me a character that was like a new um, 
It's like a superhero character um, that you were doing from uh, from reference. I think it was a screen capture of a you know movie still or something. Or no, it was it was concept art for like a new uh, new show coming out, and you um, were doing a, an homage to it. And uh, so I remember we did a paint over that and discussed it, but I don't remember if that was the last thing we did or if that was a, a time before that. Uh, if, yep, uh, it was Water Tulp's class on schoolism. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I wish that I could say that my schedule's open and I've got all the time in the world. That's not true, but I can find the time that we need. I think, you know, an hour. We could uh, catch up and see how things are going. Hit me up on Discord. We'll, we'll figure that one out. Speaking of Discord, I had been talking about um, doing a Discord. Uh, I mean, it would kind of be for this channel. I don't even really think of this as a channel, you know. This is just like uh, my uh, pseudo-religious practice of showing up and painting something, whether anyone's going to be there or not. Um, and it's like I make a point of it not being entertaining. <laughs> hey, what are we doing today? I don't know, whatever I feel like. What's the topic? Mm, I don't know, probably just grunt. Make some weird noises. Try not to hum children's songs. How's that? So, um, anyway, that being said, for a, uh, for a Discord, I'm thinking that would be more for just the thing that we're talking about. Um, you know, development, personal development in your, in your work, um, you know, kind of doing some deeper dives and uh, maybe paint overs and I wouldn't say necessarily paint overs. I can't guarantee that, but um, but uh, at least you know looking at um, each other's work and uh, and having some uh, discussion and resources and that sort of thing. Um, I think. My reluctance with any of these things, like pulling the, pulling the trigger on any of those um, uh, types of things, is simply having it be meaningful, right? Like when I say, oh, it could be like this, and we could do this, and then I'm like, well, would we really do that? Like, would we really do pain overs? Would we really have, uh, you know, uh, critiques or whatever, you know? And it's like, okay, maybe that's not what anyone wants. Maybe that's not what anyone has time for. And then I start second guessing, like, well, then if if that's not what I have time for and that's not what anyone wants, then why start building that tower before adding up the cost, right? So um, I think that's kind of what's holding me back on it. Um, though I think that all of that could be remedied with a little bit of feedback and a little bit of thought, you know? Uh, we could just figure it out. Or we could just try it and see what happens, you know. Okay. I think I'll... I think I've said what I have to say about that. Uh, maybe another chat. Never mind. I can't... Came in writer was the time before that, but I was doing another artist concept in my style. Okay. Um, did you hear about uh, Kim Jong Gi? Yes, did. That was um, a shock. And yeah, I'm honestly, kind of just speechless. Like it's uh, 
It's terrible. It's a real, real blow to, uh, obviously to the to the art community, but um, you know, just sad on a on a personal note. This week has been this week has been rough. My uh, I had mentioned perhaps earlier. I don't I don't know if I really talked about it much on the stream, but uh, I had done a painting many months ago of a friend of mine who was um, battling cancer, and that uh, came to an end yesterday. And so with that, and Kim Jong-ji, uh, it's not a fun time. And then I log on right before, um, right before this stream, and I see that one of my uh, former students just had his first baby. And then I'm reminded that, like, oh uh, yeah, there's the whole spectrum of joys and sorrows. And we'll take it all. What's that? What's that phrase? It's better to have uh, loved and lost than to have never loved, right? Um, and it's hard to say these things without sounding kind of like dismissive, like you're putting a bow on it and saying, "Okay, well." Okay, there's this philosophy that I have, and so that makes it all better. It's like, no, it doesn't make it any less difficult. But um, I think that we need to process these things and consider that it's that it's all worth it. It's all it's all um, it's all one package. My brother uh, has a saying with his kids. Perhaps, uh, perhaps uh, more than people are comfortable with, but the, the saying is that everything dies. Even or everything comes to an end. You know that um, we enjoy things, and I think we enjoy things better when we. You know, we don't have to be morbid about it, but I think if we are, uh, if we put our heads in the sand and we want to pretend that everything's going to be exactly this way forever, it will not take long uh, for life to beat you down. Um, you kind of have to, kind of have to um, come to terms, and then. Not just come to terms, but I think find some hope and truth and, and grace in it. I think I look at my kids differently. You know? When my friend started his battle and his suffering was at the forefront of my mind then my minor inconveniences and why didn't you clean up your dishes <laughs> moments with the kids were just like eh, no big deal we can deal with this you know starts to put things in perspective like oh this isn't about me uh, you know or about uh you know, how long is this going to take for me to uh, teach you something, or for you to, you know, whatever. I'm, I don't, I don't know why I'm using the example of uh, being frustrated with my kids, but I think that's one that's, you know, as a parent, happens often enough that you, you know, you think that you've got 
uh, that you've worked on something, and then you go, wait a minute, I never figured that out until I was like 15, you know? I was just talking with a friend, of, uh, old friend I ran into yesterday. Uh, we are talking about social skills. And, and uh, yeah, all these social skills that I felt like I should have had when I was... Should have learned by the time I was 10. I, I didn't start really getting to until my 20s, <laughs> you know? Uh, so anyway, it's all... It's, it's it's that sort of thing. It's the patience with people. It's the um, it's the perspective of you know what this isn't whatever the, whatever this thing is in the moment. It's not everything. There's bigger bigger more important things than that, and oddly enough, those bigger more important things, in my estimation, end up being the smaller things, like. Are we just rushing from one thing to the next? Or uh, are we savoring these little these little bits, little things? You know? Yeah, I'm just looking at the chat. I appreciate that. Yeah, there's, you know, um, along with it, I've bumped into other people who are going through similar things and um, I'm not saying that similar is not the same that's that's for sure um, you know you can't you can't pretend to know I can't pretend to know let me put it that way I can't pretend to know exactly what someone's feeling or going through or whatever based on my own um, feelings and experiences um, but again it does make it so much easier to stop and actually care. I, I will say that, um, and I mean like, I, I mean that really, like actually care. Uh, I think we get, um, uh, we can get emotionally uh, attached to something, or attached isn't the right word. We can get, um, we can be moved by something. We'll say that. We're moved by the suffering of others. Um, and it's really easy to very quickly want to find the escape hatch, tie a bow on it, and be like, okay, that was uncomfortable and I don't want to I don't want to feel that discomfort anymore, even though you know full well that the situation has not changed, you know? Um and so uh, I, I guess I'm just saying I'm becoming more sensitive to those those kind of things, um, and just trying to give give time. You know, like when you uh, when you experience it, then you see it in other people, and you go, "Okay, this is not not something that we're just gonna like." Well, I'll just say the right thing, and it'll be perfect, and then we'll move on. It's like, nah. And in fact, um, you know, that was one of the things that. Uh, my friend had said in in this was that there's no right way to do it like there's no script you know I, I think he described it as um, you know we watch movies and we think that you're supposed to say the right thing and like and it's supposed to be like perfect and then you get into these situations where they're like there's like there's no perfect way to say uh, that you've got cancer and that it's uh, not hopeful you know uh, you just there's no perfect way to say that. You just have to just just say it. Just get over the um, the discomfort and and be real with people, you know. And um, I think that man, that's a breath of fresh air in a in a world where like you have to um, cater your content to be. Uh, accepted or to be or to like feel like you're getting anywhere um to just say no it's not really not that important you know to i mean i'm not saying that we don't have a social responsibility to like you know to communicate well with people i think that's for sure you know you, you got to do that but um but sometimes that's a little more 
raw and uncomfortable, then we um, then we really have the stomach for if we're not ready, you know. Rambling thoughts with Eric. A Wednesday night discount philosophy <laughs> session. <laughs> it's like the Dollar Tree of a uh, of philosophy. I don't. Know. I don't know. My apologies to anyone who's a, a Dollar Tree advocate. Not exactly top shelf though. Let's let's be real about that. Oh man, here we go with you. Trying to throw in the uh, the apology and then it turns into another insult. Best just keep my mouth shut. But then whatever would this stream be about? More grunting and silence. You know, I'm tempted to like uh, hit these again because, you know, now that I've, I've got a little space from them, I'm like, okay, I could tweak that, tweak this, you know, whatever. Um, something tells me though that that's like it's a fool's errand you know like it's either right or it's not you know it's, a, it's either uh, working and interesting and it has some potential or uh, or just let it go man you know um, but this is my aimless stream we'll do it my way I do wonder how many bad habits I uh, form in this time you know like I think there's a lot of good for me that comes out of this um, I I feel like it this allows me to just explore a bit more without like needing to have this like uh, formulaic result you know um, and yet, and yet, I, I think that that has caused me to be far less formulaic in, in my normal work, uh, which slows it down. Um, and that I have definitely noticed. You know, I uh, used to pride myself in how fast I could crank things out, um, particularly when I was working on Realm of Empires. That was... Um, kind of missed that project. That was a fun project. We just got into a groove and I got, you know, I understood exactly what I needed to do to get something out um, to the standard that it needed to be at. And I think that's maybe the caveat. And that's maybe where I'll uh, give myself an out <laughs> with slowing down. It's like it, it, that worked for producing the same result over and over that... Um, was necessary for that project and uh, I think my interests have kind of changed where I want to move on to um, kind of looking at an individual project and like creating its own uh, look and style and um, and uh, exploring its ideas rather than just like Okay, we got the motif down. Let's just make a whole bunch of stuff in that in that you know brand or whatever. Uh, anyway, sounds like excuses. Man's just making excuses. He's getting lazy in his old age and um, wants to act like he's some kind of artiste now. And, Cares more about the finer things. Can't be bothered to do 
do a good job quickly. I don't know. I've I got mixed feelings about it. I got a little bit of guilt because I'm like, uh, this shouldn't take so long. I should just like crank this out. Should have like 20 more ideas on the page right now. Uh, and then there's a part of me that's like, yeah, but I don't. You know, it's not there. I don't have 20 more ideas on the page, and uh, I'm exploring this one. So like, just chill out and let it be. You know. Um, looking at the chat. Hello, Eric. Love your work. Glad I could catch you live uh, today. Yeah. Thanks for popping in. Um, I hope it's not a disappointment. We <laughs> we just kind of meander when we uh, when we do these things. It's slow going, and uh, half the time. Well, not even half the time. It's kind of the point of this stream to not know where it's going when we start and uh i would you know i was commenting to my brother the other day that um that doing it this way it's, it's taught me uh well it has given me some confidence uh perhaps hopefully not overconfidence but um When I doubt my ability in a situation or like whether or not I, you know, is this working out? Is this, you know, worth it or whatever? Um, and I'm not saying I have these doubts all the time, but there is a, there is certainly a imposter syndrome that, that hits, um, it hits almost every artist that I, I mean, the artists in my circles, uh, people whose work I really respect and think they're great know what they're doing they still have that feeling of like yeah someone's gonna find out that like i don't you know whatever i'm gonna use the wrong terms or like i'm gonna try to solve this problem the wrong way or it's gonna take me 10 times as long as it should or this that and the other thing right um and again i you know there's probably reasons for why we feel that way um but um we have talked about that before um but um anyway Doing these streams and having no, like intentionally coming into it without a plan and just saying, I want to do this like for the sake of creating. Um, I want to uh, throw off the, um, <laughs> not that they're like the shackles or whatever, but the, the expectations that I put on myself of like, well, okay, you know, I got this job coming up, and so, like, I've got to um, practice this, you know, whatever, this certain style, or I've got to, practice, you know, do anatomy studies, or whatever it is, and, like, just to, like, put that aside and say, no, like, I'll do that um, as a part of the work that I have to do, but this time is set aside um, to avoid that very thing. It's, like, we're, we're just going to, like, explore and um i don't i don't want to call it like trailblazing or you know i don't want to i don't want to oversell it um as like some super special thing but i'll say like if you go out exploring a new place like how much are you pouring over maps and getting familiar and asking questions of people like that that will be helpful if you want to make the best use of the time but if you want to um if you want to have the experience of exploring and discovering, then you you don't do that. You just you just go and you and you find it, and who knows what you'll stumble across when you don't have a uh, itinerary. So um, anyway, I was talking with my brother about that and saying that like as a result of that, I have um, I think we're I think we're over two years now. Maybe I don't know. I have to look that up. If not, we're getting close. Um, and uh, there's only a handful of paintings from the stream that I feel like um, I was really unhappy with. I mean, I'm not saying that I love every single one, that, that they're all like, again, they're not all gold. But, um, 
But I can look at them and go, yeah, you know, for just having no plan and just starting with nothing and exploring, um, I'm glad that that we came across this. You know what I mean? Like, a, a, you know, I'm happy with that. And um, as a result of that, when you have those like imposter syndrome, you know, those fears of like, I don't know, am I doing it wrong? Are they going to think I'm an idiot or whatever? And I'm like, well, we've jumped into this week after week with like no plan and it always seems to work out. So uh, why would today be any different? <laughs> you know, it can be. You know, things go sideways. But um, I mean, that's always been a part of my understanding of any kind of contract work an anyway is that um, you you have to include the uh, the fact that you are not going to have the answer right away. Like, um, and uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to find the right analogy for that. I, I think, like just talking about it, um, say factually, as a matter of fact, it, it, the parts of what it entails is that... Um, you're being hired to, to discover something. You're being hired to figure out, okay, we've got this theme and we've got these, um, these characters and these characteristics of, of the story and um, these things need to be put together in a coherent way and not just coherent, but it's, it's got to be an exciting experience. And um, that is a, a puzzle or it's an un... Uh, not necessarily uncharted territory, you know, because people have been there before. That we've built games and um, stories before, and paintings, of course. But um, but this one, you know, you are you're working it out, and that's that's what the job is: is to work it out. And so, if you've already got it worked out, they don't need you. There's no job to be done, <laughs> you know. Uh, so anyway, all that to say, I think by nature, um, you know, a little bit of that fear of, well, what if we, what if it doesn't work out? It's like, well, that's why we're here. That's what we're here to do is uh, solve this design problem, as I tend to say. I feel like I'm a broken record on here, just... It's like when Eric gets to say whatever he wants. It's just on repeat. Um, looking at the chat, uh, have you ever struggled with too much variation in your art? Yes, that is... Um, I mean, I don't know if uh, what popped into my mind right now is really exactly what you're meaning by this, but um, I have just been saying... And uh, I'm not really lamenting. It's you know it's a good problem to have. But I was just talking with friends about um, my current situation is such that I have a bunch of uh, a bunch of smaller projects that are all going at the same time that are all completely different. Like they're so different that it's really kind of hard to task switch. And again, with that like lamenting being slower than, um, feeling like I'm slower than I used to be. Um, I, uh, I think that a lot of it comes down to that, that, um, well, I shouldn't say a lot of it comes down to that. It's, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm doing stuff that's digital. I'm doing stuff that's 3D. I'm doing stuff that's oil painting. I'm doing stuff that's ink. I'm doing stuff that's digital painting. Um, I'm trying to think what other things I have on my plate. I've got the uh, the Fantastic Tank stuff. Is um, you know that's 3D modeling. Um, there's a lot of admin and marketing and stuff that goes along with that. Um, and everything's just so different. And so I guess if we're just just nailing it down to just the artwork. Um, then it's um, 3D printing, digital, um, sculpting, um, 
texturing, um, painting, oil painting, traditional, you know, uh, pen and ink. And so every time I switch from one thing to the next, I, um, I need a little bit of time to like get like back into it. Like, okay, wait, what am, what am I doing? You know, this, this works a little bit differently. You know? I did a, this was a, a really different project that I did. Um, I actually kind of like that where it was, which is, mm, makes me wonder, you know, when you move a thumbnail and it's not quite as cool when you move it somewhere else, then you know something's up. Um, so maybe we'll put it in an area that's not as cool. Could be the horizon line that's doing that to us, but, um, what was I saying? Oh, I did this project. This is the first time I did a, a mural of all things. And, um, it was, uh, interior acrylic and, uh, That was different. <laughs> Acrylic is uh, it's a strange thing. I've worked in acrylic, you know, with the tanks, um, but when you're working at a scale of like here's a four centimeter model in my hand um, that I can put a couple drops of paint on to cover. Or you're working with uh, a wall, um, and you've just got to like mix up a whole bunch of paint to get, you know, to. Uh... Okay. Anyway, uh, it's totally different. I'm not sure if that's the question you're asking, though, because I could also have interpreted your question as, do I um, not follow the same rules or conventions like if we're just saying um concept art uh digital painting um are you is that what you're getting at because i do that um i do i do think there's habits that we that i fall into and so i can't really say that i you know am truly unique every time um be kind of fun to make this one kind of like foggy Anyway, um, yeah, I can't claim to be like, um, really exploring new ideas all the time, you know, that everything's, you know, a new process and whatever. Um, I think I have my, like, my, uh my habits that I fall into and you know whether I like it or not you know even if I'm trying to do a new process there are some things that are like okay you always take that kind of brush stroke or something um, I was talking with another friend of mine recently about um, about kind of the fear of the blank canvas um, and how to get over that excuse me you just uh, you just get something on the page. I was talking about that actually at the beginning of the stream. Uh, was it you get something on the page and then you've got something that you can respond to, and uh, you can feel more like you're making. I, I think I described it as making executive decisions where you're um, instead of feeling like you've got to have the right plan and get it down on there, you just make you just throw a mark on the paper and then you can be the boss and be like oh no that's not nope not that you know uh, more of this less of that kind of thing and then you, you you just kind of get into a different um your brain is in a different mode uh and i think it's a beneficial thing uh i'm sure there are pros and cons you know but um as far as that fear of what am i supposed to do to get started um you just start and uh, anyway, so in this conversation, I was saying that as a result of that, though, I tend to start the same way almost every time. Um, it, I think it's different digitally than it is in physical medium. 
Um, and anyway, what that is, is when I'm doing a particularly pencil or pen drawings, I almost always start with a sphere. Like I, I'll make a kind of an arc and then I'll throw in some other arcs to, to kind of like, uh, I'll just show you like this. I'll just, if I have nothing going on, I'll just start spinning, you know, and then I'll just go like, okay, and then maybe go the other way. You know, just and start developing a, a sphere, and then I'll just build off of that. You know, even if the shape is totally different, and I'm like, okay, I've got this like, thing to to build off of, right? And maybe I don't, you know, maybe I don't even want any of this. It ends up being something else entirely. It's just now I've got something. Um, some like raw material to work with. Sometimes I will do uh, a two-dimensional shape, like a flat, um, uh, we'll get to that, let me just, I'm just making garbage right now. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> I think part of the problem with this is that if you always start the same way, then you kind of end up in the same forms or in, with the same kind of camera you know, same perspective, that sort of thing. And so you have to be careful uh, and pay attention to like, okay, am I doing the same thing all the time? Um, oddly enough, this is not actually, like I, th I think that kind of breaks for me when I'm doing digital. I don't tend to uh, work the same way because I actually don't tend to draw digitally before I... Uh, before I get into the shape language. You know, I, I'll do shapes more as blocks, you know, uh, swaths of uh, like, a, like a brush stroke rather than um, a contour. You know, whereas if I'm working with a pen or a pencil, I'll have to start with a contour. And so I think that's why, um, if I had to try to figure out why, why there's a difference, I would say that's, that is it. Um, uh, so anyway, you can get locked into these shapes, and you know, like I said, you'll you'll you break out of it, you know, from, um, you know, from like the minute two or whatever. Uh, so you're not really just I'm not doing a sphere, but it is, again, kind of based on that perspective. I've got those marks on the page, so like, you know, it probably is influencing my thinking as a you know, as I'm looking at this and responding to what I'm seeing. Uh, and that's the point, though, is that you give yourself something to respond to. So it's, you know, it's a, uh, there's a blessing and a curse, I guess. Um, I feel like I was going to uh, go off on that and start talking about something else, but you know what? I don't remember. I'm getting old, I guess. I kind of want to make this like uh, put more perspective on that. That's the beauty of digital. Block in some shadows. Yeah, I don't know. I was going somewhere with that. Besides where I went. Man, I guess I went where I went.
And sometimes I guess that caveat or whatever that extra thing was that I was going to throw in. Uh, who knows, it might have been a uh, waste of everyone's time anyway. So. I have that um, curse, I guess, I, of in virtually any conversation, especially one where there's something kind of new or some idea to like explore um, I end up breaking into these like different forks you know the fork in the road of like well okay yeah maybe maybe concept A maybe concept B would be a you know a way to take that conversation and then I just can't let it go <laughs> you know I'm like this makes me think of two things I, I feel like that's a in, in my uh, common conversations, I feel like that phrase comes up so so uh, so often. Like, okay, uh, on that point, like these um, two two things to say about that. It's always two. It's like the Sith, you know. Always two. There are a bad idea and I don't know that we could say the, the other idea is a good idea. Just another idea. That idea and another idea. I don't know about that. Now we're trying to trying to do something I never intended to do, but Weren't we just talking about that? Exploring the unknown? I guess I reasoned myself into a corner. Uh, looking at the um, chat. Hi, I don't know who you are. You appeared in Recommended, but I love what you do. Thanks. That is nice. I don't know what's wrong with the algorithm these days. Just send you my way. It's all just grunting and humming and random pontifications on on uh, life's various questions with no promise of entertainment but if you find it entertaining and you're enjoying it then great glad you're uh, glad you came Let's see, I don't know about this. We're gonna kinda mess with the profile here. So I hate to admit this. Cause, well, cause last week we, uh, we talked about, uh, there was a question in the chat of whether or not uh, I feel like I'm to the point where I can just do whatever I want. You know, like if I have an idea that um, it's not out of reach, you know. And I think I answered that in the most uh, long and painful way possible. But if I were to admit one thing that I really like and can never seem to quite get my... put my finger on it, it's the Homeworld aesthetic. You know that game? Homeworld? I love that game. It's got its problems. You know, in terms of uh, uh, replayability, we'll say. It's an awesome uh, single player uh, experience, in my opinion. But. Uh, once you get into like kind of the skirmish uh multiplayer all that sort of thing like it just uh for me it kind of just falls apart it's not as the magic isn't quite there but anyway there's an aesthetic to that game that i just i think it's the greatest thing uh 
it's got some I think Mobius uh, inspirations and what's that what's that other guy John Harris is that his name I'll have to look him up um, all the ships have these like just really interesting satisfying forms that have like uh, breaks in the uh, you know like hard edges and um, they're just they're just awesome and then they've got stripes on them like they're space bumblebees it's too cool for school um, but anyway whenever I try to do it I just like I leave myself feeling sad you know I don't leave myself why, do I, why would I say something like that that's insane I, I leave the painting feeling sad, feeling unsatisfied. Like I didn't, I couldn't be all that I could be. It's a little throwback to the old, uh, army uh, advertisements be all that you can be and then they did army of one and I don't know what the most recent I don't know what it is these days all right let's lighten this up back here as it goes back into space yeah, Homeworld. It's my jam. That game, I could just, I could, um, I don't know. I dig it. They did, they did a lot of things right. I think they made space magical. That's what I love about it. Is it's not, uh, it's not a true science fiction it just feels like this is very very old you know and it's got uh, lore to it you know and not and not lore in the like in the way that science fiction can end up being where things fall into like kind of philosophical um, uh, niches like this is the warlike species and this is the um you know the economic species and the whatever you know that's that's i think where sci-fi ends up going i think what homeworld did is they they just said space is very 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 old and you get out there you'll find things that are you know, like the, like the pyramids, you know, long abandoned. We want to know how it was made. And we might never know, you know. Anyway. You know, rave about this uh, this game for however long until everyone's sick and tired of it. But they have a way of showing form that I'm just like, mm. my hat is off to you. I love what they're doing. I think part of what I could use in this regard to uh, go for that aesthetic a little bit more is to uh, look at the shapes as a kind of that one, two, three read, you know, um, 
So there should be like a, a large shape read. And then medium and small details. And I think they um, perhaps they excel and focus really on those large and medium shapes. The small surface details, um, I think in the original game, they just didn't, the tech just wasn't there. You know, it, it was hard to do. Um, all the small stuff would either be blurry or um, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work so well. And so uh, I think the aesthetic was partly technical. Um, okay, okay, all right. Let's go. Let's break these shapes up a little bit more here. Doobie, doobie, doo. Oh, here we go. Getting into the delirious uh, humming stage. Anybody remember those commercials? The uh, the, uh, the penguins. He would sing that. Doobie, doobie, doo. No. Okay. Let's see. We got that. This shape. Um, I think we can work these out a little bit more here. Maybe get. Uh, we get these to integrate a little better this shape into that shape. Oh, now they just look like the same. More of the same. Well, that's a problem. We need these to reduce. Reduce.
Let's see. I think what, it, what we need to do to sell that effect. So we've got to make a selection on this area here. And then underneath. Um, let's see. So I'm looking at this shape. It's like... That kind of goes in there. This all goes. Underneath here. Alright, then I think we just need to have this be one shadow shape right there. Uh, enclosed, I think, was the word I was going to say. I think that ship has sailed, though. I don't even remember. Yeah, I don't know. I might be having uh, too much fun thinking about homework right now. I'm slowing down. See? I've got it in my head that speed is important, but maybe that's why I've never uh, figured out that This aesthetic, you know, this, uh, maybe you gotta slow down and work with it. You can't just uh, uh, all be in a hurry all the time. Said the guy who was definitely not in a hurry.
Let's see. What this shape? Must needs be more interesting. I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller. Maybe have a little uh, window in here, you know, like a door <laughs> to get into the ship. up a little bit have the shape go uh, you know have a little like bevel to it and I'm gonna darken whoops wrong color I'll darken all that up there Mm, I don't like that. Let's get this profile. It's just kind of it's a little bit boring to me. I think I need to uh, simplify these uh, shapes down here. I've got these, uh, like these little vertical sails. Um, I think those need to get an attitude adjustment. How about this? We go here, there, cut, uh, cut that one out, maybe there, here, there, and probably, I could probably get rid of one of these. So if I have, um, oh, one, two, three, I could actually make these two be not in line, but I'd rather like more like fins coming out. I uh, cast a shadow on that. Um, and then this one up here, maybe the same idea. Do another. Getting into the uh, Eric Elwell aesthetic. This is how Eric would do it. <clears throat> and 
I think if we were to do this, you know, proper, we'd have to like start bringing down some of these values, not too harshly, but like kind of give it a little bit of room to breathe, right? So that um, we can move up and down on the value scale. The other thing is that, um, well, two things actually, just just really balancing the value out. Like this is fun as a uh, sketch, I think, but what it could use is, uh, actually that was all on a separate layer, right? Yeah, so we don't need to worry about that. Um, what it could use is uh, to do a new layer, two things. One for atmosphere, so we'll just go push that up, right? So it goes as, uh, as the parts are farther back in space, we'll push them back. Um, and then the other bit is um, just local color. So if we do another one here, let's just do this to like multiply. Okay, we'll go with our uh, black. And um, let's start separating like um, parts, you know, plates and, uh, you know, um, uh, greebles, motor, you know, not motors, engine type things, you know, um, so that the idea of the shadow is not just, uh, it's not simply uh, light and dark, but that it's um, the local value as well. And this we can spend a, a fair amount of time on, you know, if you really want to get it dialed in. You're uh, trying to lead the eye through a through the design. So like these, for example, we got them nice and bright, but what if we, you know, made them this dark color here, or that high contrast, you know, with the, the stripes on there. Didn't say we had to like it, but we're going to try it. Okay, I kind of like this where it feels to me like we're referencing this stripe up here to be included. Uh, you know, like it's wrapping, it's coming up and over and wrapping around the form. And then Maybe, no, no, um, what if we just do the very tips of it? What if we do a couple stripes in there? Just, I like it just about up to that point. I think it needs a couple of adjustments.
No, still not liking that. I think I'm trying to do two things at the same time here. I've got this local value I'm trying to introduce, but then I think I'm also trying to make some minor adjustments to the form that um, maybe this is not the right way to do it. like that shape so I kind of want to make sure that we maintain it but why though why be why be married to that shape what did that shape ever do for us It'd give us heart heartache oh boy now we're getting vindictive What if we get rid of it here? Just let that one shine. Maybe a little, just a little bit on there. <sighs> Something. We put that back behind the uh, our little fog layer that we put in there. That's kind of fun. Okay. Let's see, it's 11.16, we've done a handful of thumbnails, and I do mean a handful, a very small handful. Um, should we pick one and do something with it? Should we do more images? Should we combine some images? I like this idea of taking this, I'm going to group that, and one of these, maybe two of these, I like, um, I like what's going on here, here, and here, so maybe take some of those and throw that in as a background, so we'll go copy that, copy this guy. this guy and then we'll hide that layer and then we shall collage them uh -huh. let's grab all these we'll just do this as a new let's see, bring this up here um, okay all right these guys up maybe this guy kind of like that being a little bit off I'll to the side there Let's see this guy here what are you gonna do for us anything that's kind of fun I have this uh, this is a whole whole other ball of wax, but I've got this uh, this sci-fi uh, series uh, series. I mean, a series body of work. Um, 
in charcoal that uh, let's do this as yeah, green maybe um, that uh, all just spaceships going through clouds and stuff never really done anything with it I probably should you know Whoa, hollow. Kind of like that as it is, and then maybe we'll. Maybe, I see, I don't know that it's really even necessary to try to get this in there, but I'm just thinking about these in terms of, um, you know, value shapes. And uh, having some of these shapes kind of push into each other might be kind of cool. You know, where you've got like... Uh, shape coming through here and intersecting this ship um, just for the sole purpose of leading leading the eye there you know um, so actually it this works to that effect you get this line here and this line here and so when we do this really we're just establishing a different different set of leading lines um, and it's probably overkill to to do both but um, don't put it past me all right and then where is this this one, I'll bring this up to the front. This was like a, and then I had that kind of Moss Eisley, uh, not Moss Eisley, uh, Moisture Farmer establishment feel. Any Moisture Farmers in the, in the chat tonight? What is this guy talking about? A difficult man. We don't need to have like 10 compositions in here. But... Why not? Actually, that is kind of fun collaging those together. So then let me uh, let me just paint over this real quick, and hopefully I don't uh, you know lose it. But uh, I think it's kind of fun what I'm seeing here. Like there's this um, uh, kind of structure up here, maybe like a spaceport type thing. Yeah, and maybe throw some openings in there. Oh man, you've ruined it. Ruined. Lay off me, self judgment. There will be time enough for you. Okay, so now we're going to. Uh, Cloudy layer in there. I like I like this idea of just these little structures back here. They're elevated off the ground plane, so we've got a you know we've got a ground plane already down here. We can throw some structures down there. But I like this. I like this. I like where this is going. Maybe. 
got to hold back a little bit. Pretend I don't. Pretend I have no excitement. That way, if it completely crashes, then I'll just be like, I know. I never thought it was going to work anyway. All right. These little window things that I did was, well, that was not great. So, but this is why we try things. We try it. It doesn't work. Call it good. I like, um, by call it good, I mean, we get rid of it. Um, I like, uh, that this is in shadow. And I actually, I want to kind of push that a little bit further, perhaps. And you've got this, like, uh, kind of cloud layer thing going on here. I don't know if we can effectively have that, um, do the dance of the counter change of also being in shadow and then coming around here and and then all of a sudden it's in light. I'll do some light here. That's like kind of uh, uh, blending up softly. And then maybe we can see. I've got this kind of as the shadow for that ship. I kind of liked that idea as I was um, collaging these together. Just having, you know, the this uh, this kind of light right here right and we do already have it established uh, oh, there's a, like a cast shadow that way because of these little fins down here but I'm wondering if we can um, you know redesign this cheat this whatever so that we've got this shadow here of the ship um, that might be kind of fun to have it fall on that form and then uh you know light it accordingly so we've got like this soft um blend here and then the uh the cast from the ship Find some middle ground here for this. I maybe need to establish more of a hard edge here. going back towards that ship. I think I'll try to have this wrap around here. So we've got this uh, kind of cloud type thing, mist, whatever you want to call it. And we'll have this form kind of coming down um, into it, but then I'd like to show that the cloud comes in front here and then wraps around behind it.
And I'm going to put a little bit of diagonal on that. I don't want it to be too extreme, but um, I want that to, to have uh, a little bit of a di uh, dynamic feel to it. All right, I'm gonna squint, look at my image and say, what's wrong with you, image? Why would somebody make you this way? What needs to be fixed? Um, I mean, certainly the light balance between here and here, I wanna have, uh, Probably need to bring some of this value down so that it's not so uh, harsh. Um, Got to control these shapes a bit here. Maybe I should just have this be one value there rather than try to have those blend. You know. I do not know. I do not know. But I do like these shapes here. I think that um there's a little bit of weirdness going on with like in a wire there are these like stringy clouds at different levels you know there's not like a fog that's like uh, you know uh, permeated this whole area down here you know like if it, if it was just like a low fog like this right but then all of that stuff gets gets nuked and maybe uh, maybe it should, uh, you know, for the sake of simplicity, you know, and then maybe we can just kind of draw in some lines that, you know, pull everything into this uh, kind of mid-ground area here. Okay, well, I was having fun with it, and uh, I think maybe it was a fool's errand. As they say. I don't know who says that anymore, but it was a fun one. It's a classic. Flatten that out a little bit. I mean, I don't know. I, I like having this kind of, okay, got this 
shape going on here, right? And so do I want this to be cut sharp there? It can actually, you know, that could draw attention there. Unwanted. Or we can make it smoother. But smooth often does not, in my opinion, translate well to um, uh, kind of epic perspective. Because what ends up happening is that that smooth arc is kind of saying, actually, we're kind of looking down at something that's a little bit smaller. You know, whereas when you're looking at things farther away, they end up to they end up kind of flattening out. Um, being more horizontal because they're so far off in the in the distance, and so um, it's to me. I like having some dynamic, um, you know, diagonal type lines, and uh, building that up, but. Um, or rather keeping it you know keeping it interesting in that uh, in that way however um, however we can break the illusion we need that illusion to be happy We would not want to be unhappy, would we? That sounds like a threat. Um, okay, let's see. Yeah, add a little bit more down there. I, you know, I was going to say, I don't want to go crazy with this, but you know me, I do want to go crazy with this. That's my cup of tea. Crazy's my crazy is my MO. Um This is too bright over here, so I'm gonna darken all this up. Um This perhaps is too dark, so we're gonna grab the mid and just kinda pull that together. Now, um I think it would uh be wise for us to step back, consider our value scale. Where are our brightest brights, our darkest darks? Does it make any sense? You know, should we should we redesign and reevaluate? Life's big questions. Right. So I'm going to push some of these values here to zoom it out and look at this from a distance. Asking those big life questions. Do I even want this shape to be here? This isn't like, you know, rearranging the, the living room. This is a this is a painting. I'm an artist. This represents me. I'm being sarcastic. If that didn't come through, you know, sarcasm is not a universal language, but it is one of the most beautiful. dark I 
think we could benefit from uh, maybe bring the sky value down here. That shape is super boring, so let's uh, figure out what we're doing with our lives there. Another dome? Yeah, it's all about domes. Go. Too much. Too much. Uh, bring the shape back in here. Do we want to lower the sky value all over here? Because then uh, it's, we could have that white uh, from the ship pop off really nicely. Again with our, uh, you know, yin and yang type thing. What are we, what are we seeing here? Is this what we want it to be? Do we even want a spaceship? Do we want all of this to be in shadow down here. It's all negotiable. Uh, I like a little bit in here. In fact, I might actually just cast this kind of in this mid area. This is crazy talk. I might do this on a new layer, but what if we do... Yeah, what if we do a new layer here and we just take this kind of mid value and we start filling this in and making it, you know whatever we're going to make it and then uh, and then we can just have a little wedge of light right here that works its way across there wedge of light Here, maybe we have this. So that's coming across there. Darken this up in here. And all through there. But even, you know, whatever, casting a shadow of this lower portion here. I think we can kind of merge all that into a similar value merge similar value what is this guy talking about just working it out here working it out this I don't know if I quite want to go that dark, but I think I could stand to bring all that value down. And I think we need to establish that light a little bit more. So we got this thing. So if this is our angle, right? Like so. Let's get that intense light up there. Get an 
tents on this ship as well, and then where it hits the uh, the rocks down here. The rocks. When I was a kid, there was a uh, there's a pastor named Pastor Holman. He would give these uh, talks on rocks and stuff. He was, he was into rocks in a big way. He thought they were the coolest thing ever. Which, um, he's not wrong. Rocks are awesome. And uh, anyway, he was an old man who was kind of like a... He looked kind of like Yoda. And I'm not the only one to think so. You know, I'm not, I'm not just being... I'm just telling you. As a matter of fact, and uh, he had this New England accent. He would talk about rocks with this like crackly voice. It was awesome. So, it's burned into my psyche. I think this shadow, like I. I, I want to say that I almost like it, but that's not true. I kind of hate it. I want it to. Uh, I want it to work. But I don't think it is. I don't think you're working, Shadow. You're fired. You better get the job done, or you don't. You know. I'm not saying there won't be a, a separation package or anything, but you wasted a lot of our time. I'm just going to simplify this background a little bit here, I think. Push those items farther back. Let's try to balance that out. Clean these babies up. All right, I think we can zoom back in now. Get back into the image. Actually, I really like these being uh, um, sorry, I have to use my brain for a second here. Uh, I like them being kind of messed up shapes. 
So I'm going to do that. Come back in with the smudge. I want them to be, you know, um, I want them to have a nice flow to them. But I want them also to be rough. A rough flow, you say? How are you going to accomplish that? We shall see. I think you can clean up shapes and still give them a, um, a soft edge that's broken, right? You know, so the shape could be like this, just simple sweep like that, right? But then we can we can break it up. That's the idea. Finding the essential value in there. Kind of trying to get it centered on that, you know, in terms of um, blending these in. There's a lot of uh, uh, kind of translucent um, brush strokes that were taken. That we're messing with that. So if we give these a little bit cleaner. Oh, yeah, that was that shape I was all geeking out about earlier. Now I'm like, what's that? Get rid of that garbage. Um, it's funny. It's funny, but you know what? Hey, if it's garbage, it's garbage. If it's gotta go, it's gotta go. Uh, let's see. Here's our little foggy bits from before. I kind of like that. Do I keep that in there? Um, but yeah, we're just we're playing with soft and hard edges, and then like our soft edges are actually still kind of broken up you know they've got texture to them so that's the idea here that is the big idea this is the fun thing with working with uh you know, sample all layers, and then we're working actually behind this layer, so uh, we can pull from it and still preserve it. But we gotta do so carefully here because we're making a mess. But I like that. I like that kind of effect. There's other ways to do it. You know, I'm just being lazy. Okay, so let's continue on. Let's clean some of these other shapes up here. kind of like these terminating with a just a really kind of thin dark line to me it gives it this um, I mean it's not quite there but it kind of elicit, uh, elicits that feeling of like um, you know ink that uh, you get that bleed right up to the edge you know and it'll um, blend off but then you know the uh, ink will um, the pigment will kind of pool not pool. Yeah. 
I mean, I guess pool, but right across the right to the edge of the uh, to the uh, fluid shape, and then you want to get kind of caught there. I think it's a beautiful look. But do with that what you will. Chappy chap chap. See? See what I'm talking about? We're kind of maintaining these shapes, but we're also just breaking up edges. Particularly these square edge, you know, because it's a, a square brush that I like to use. Might be good to uh you know remove some of that. Have it um Break into these little kind of pieces that, um, if you main, if you can maintain the gesture, then it feels like they're all connected, even though they're um, actually vis visually broken, uh, which is I find to be a nice, nice little uh, visual motif. Visual motif, what is this guy talking about? Jeez. Difficult, man. What am I doing? I got this shape, that shape. Round shapes. Soft shapes, hard shapes, shapes of every kind. I kind of want this edge, you know, I was talking about this being like, um, you know, a choice on how rounded or, or crisp that edge is. Part of its style, part of its uh, um, perspective, part of it is uh, compositionally leading the eye where you want it to go. Um, kind of wanted it to get just obscured you know like goes back over here and then where you would imagine they meet there's like a shape you know rock here just so that uh well, yeah just so we don't have to deal with it um no but actually i'm, I'm thinking just so that it's not a distraction um putting something else there might help us with that. Let me zoom out, make sure we're not severely damaging the scene. Because I want to have like this little thing of light here. So like this whole structure here is blocking the the um, the light there. So we get this big shadow down in here right but um but here we could have like the light is you know maybe this drops off or there's an opening a passageway there or something and then uh, we can we can have uh we can have light over here just a little wonderful wedge of light and uh and have it trail off and by that I mean kind of loses intensity 
And then right here, I think we need to have a little bit more light there. This is where, if there's any kind of fog here, it's getting illuminated because the light is now hitting hitting that. Um, and maybe that's what we could do here. We've got like, the shadow shape, right? So maybe we'll have a like a soft transition. I don't know. <laughs> now that I'm trying it, I'm like, eh, maybe that's a mistake. Um, I don't know. I do not know. Let's do uh, the old overlay. Let's just start pushing things around that way. Uh, we'll go to the brush tool and I'll use nasty square standard. Okay. And we'll just bringing this up as the brightest value here. Actually, don't I don't think we need to go full white. I'm gonna go like whatever that is, like one fifth gray and then I'm not gonna go full black either because it has a way of pushing things too far too quickly I mean even already being that close to black in these grays you can see how much of an effect that's having uh, Let's see, do we want to just cap that right off to a full kind of vignette? Um, I don't think so, actually. I kind of like it. Uh, yeah, having this kind of a trail that leads you into the scene. I don't know that it needs to be directly from the corner. I would tell you what I'm thinking, but I'm actually not right now. I'm just looking at this and, and like, what, what, what am I going to do? Um, I'm thinking of, of uh, increasing contrast. Also aware that I am making a mess. As we do. Excuse me. Bring in some light in here. Be suggesting that there's a light in this back scene here. I don't know. That might be kind of fun. Kind of like that shape. And pumping the light up in here, a little bit there. Is there any addition to that shape that we want? Like, do we want this? light to be more, you know, just a wash in light. I 
Almost like that. I think if I maybe smudge it a little bit. Let it more smoothly blend into that. be a little bit too on the nose but <clears throat> what I'm playing with there is uh, this you should see perhaps this shape here of did that come through no I did the smudge tool because uh, because I just did um, how about this this shape right here See what I'm saying? So, do we want to support that a little bit further with uh, maybe? Okay, so you know you could do this as like uh, one cohesive thing. So, like this shape here, right? So then we could have this kind of shape here to help support that in a cohesive way. Um, or we could do a kind of count, counterbalance type thing. Uh, so it might be kind of fun to do as well. Let's start with let's start with this. Let's see where this goes. Okay, and I admit that this is being kind of on the nose with uh, like just taking that motif of we're going to have it swirly-whirly this way. Everything is going to lead you that way up and around and you know to the nose. Maybe we'll even, let's make that even a little more pronounced there. Why not? I can tell you why not. It's a bad idea. That's why not. So anyway, we could, you know, we can do that. And then um, I think we'll try the other method uh, after this, and just uh, pray that that's better. All right, let's uh, clean these up a little bit here, because I do want to maintain their shape somewhat. Um, okay, so that's our one adjustment that way. Let me just clean up these a little bit. We're gonna, if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do it justly, just, justly, with justice. We're gonna do it justice. That's that's, that's what I'm trying to say. All 
Okay, um, so we'll do a new layer here. We'll knock that one back out. And then this time we will do kind of the counter uh, balance. So we've got you know, that one coming up and around, right? And so I think we want to have perhaps like the zigzag type thing here. So we're not concerning ourselves with keeping this perfectly clean um you know swirl that leads the eye in there in fact um let's grab a little bit of this value push it up that way and then maybe push some of that back a little bit there no actually maybe it's okay it's okay just not not quite not quite to that effect i think I want this to like it uh, thinner up here. You know, so it's getting a little bit higher up off the ground plane. Going up the hill, up the incline there. So in this one, we've got this kind of uh, serpentine thing going on. It does, um, I think, distract a little bit from this area. I mean, this area is not a focal point, you know, so uh, that's okay. But we also don't want to completely ignore the whole uh, swath of the canvas I mean I say that with you know with caveats you know you want you want to uh, keep the important things important don't go crazy on anything else um, however however let's make this thing interesting Okay, so I'm looking at this and thinking, where are the areas where this is like too linear shape? Um, you know, we can kind of keep that uh, dynamic flow going. Dynamic flow. Look at this guy making up, making up pretend art terms. All right, what I'm saying is, I want this. this uh, zigzag here and I think I'll thin it out a little bit here does not need to be that extreme there And then I want to see if we can potentially transition into coming up this form here. So if we're going just like we were going before, it's almost like a like it counterbalances it. You know, it leads you this way, and then it leads you back down the hill into this little valley area here, right? 
and then up that ramp. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe I'm thinking too much. This man's thinking. Too much thinking. Too much theory. Too little reality. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Still like having that little wedge of light there. This is probably too strong here. So push that back. I do like you know taking this and like leading the eye up that way up and over these guys here I feel like they need some something do we need some light here coming around not too much I'll knock it back a little bit Yeah, maybe counter change on that. That'd be kind of fun. Clouds. Clouds are good at counter change. As they get thicker, thick and thin, you know. And as they cast shadows on themselves. Excuse me. This... What is his issue? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Let's shape those shapes a little more, shall we? Kind of tempted to just have this merge, you know, into that mountain. So that the shape is lost, you know. The edge gets lost there, at least. Maybe. I don't know. How much do I want to do that? I'm get myself in a whole bunch of trouble here trying to make that happen. Over and over. All right, let's zoom back in here. All right, let's look at those. That's uh, both of them together. All right, so here's the original. Let me let me zoom all the way in so you guys can see this. Because I'm I'm looking at it as a thumbnail, which you know I think is a good way to look at it, but not everyone wants to do that. All right, so we're we're looking at it as a full image. I'm going to step take a step back. Um, so this changes the composition a bit here. So we're going. Whoosh, Right, 
And we've also got this leading back in. So if you come up here, you go right back down, come up here, you come back around. I like that. Okay, and then this other one, we just did a swirl. So you're whew, just getting pulled right into it. Um, you know, doing them both together is not... Let me think about that. I would really have to observe this because I actually think I like like that. However, um, yeah, I do like it. Hmm. Not you can't always have your cake and eat it too, though. So that's it. Thing. Gotta look around, see what see what damage is done. Actually, it's not bad. It's not bad. I like it. I'm gonna do a um, I'll do a curves, color balance, all the all the goodness, you know. Let me zoom out. It does a little bit. You gotta decide where you want your values, you know? You want to have this kind of dark cast. Little pops of light. Do you want something that's really bright with some pops of dark? Pops of pops of dark. I mean, I really, um, I think either option is fine. I end up often making things too dark. I think. Um, Well, let's see. I like it. I like it. Where? Where is the sweet spot? You know. It's funny because I think, you know, kind of either is legitimate. This one has more texture. And I think, uh, by extension, has more kind of, uh, kind of life and action going on. Whereas, if you amp that up, this simplifies the scene. It's easier to read. Yeah. So I think what I'll do is I'll... Uh, We'll mask parts of this out. All right, whatever. Uh, let's go to color balance. This is where uh, things get hairy. Because you can get into that like, oh, it'd be nice to just tone this a little bit. And then before you know it, you're like, oh, I just have to paint it.
Ooh. Yawn. Okay, um, I'm wondering if I did like a overlay fill, bring some color in. It's okay. It's okay. Not my favorite. Uh, let's do it's kind of fun. Shift the hue on this. Let's see if we can get some. Interesting color play. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Never hold back a sneeze. Let it out. Life Advice, Chapter 7. See, I don't think I, I actually kind of don't prefer being in that red range, but I want to see if I can push it out in the highlights. And get a, just kind of a warm mid-tone. I think, I'm not sure if I want the warm right at the mid or right on the edge of black. You know what I mean? Am I completely out in space? Oddly enough, I like those I like those blues more. I just got the mood. Let's go to just uh, color with that because the, definitely the luminosity is getting shifted. that though. I don't know. I don't know. This is, it's okay. It's just not quite there, you know. This 
see where we're splitting hairs over color grading. And um, I should apologize because this happens every time. We get to the end of the end of the stream and I'm just like hemming and hauling over like just a couple a uh, couple degrees of hue shift, you know. But uh matters. Matters to me. Matters to me, not matters to me. Sounded like I said Timmy. Throwing that out there. Uh, let's, let's increase the. Oh, yeah. Uh, opacity and lower the fill. We talked about that last week, how that works on the front end rather than the back end. So this, that'll punch the, punch the contrast up, for sure. Do another one that's just, we'll do color burn, go fill big time. And uh, so that's gonna give us these like, It really puts it into like three zones, the white, mid, and the black. Um, but what I'm most interested in is the, the color in the, in the midtone. So we're going to do the dangerous thing. And we're going to play with Blend If on a live stream. That is a recipe for crashing. But we are gluttons for punishment. Yeah, I don't, I actually don't think I like that very much, oddly enough. Go like that more. Going with a lighter color. I mean, it, it brings color in, but it, it's lighter. Yeah, maybe this one will just do like just on the subject. And then I'm kind of thinking, what if we do, what if we go, let's darken that up and then we lighten, or rather lighten that up and darken this up. So that becomes Maybe more clearly the shadow. I don't know. I don't even know what I'm doing. All right, whatever. Um, let's do a hue saturation. I actually kind of like those grays. Alright, so that'll be one. And then that'll be two. 
two. And then one, we just need to kind of zone it out where we want it. We could, again, do blend if here, danger zone, but nothing ventured, nothing gained. That's kind of fun. I'm trying to shift those greens to purples. And what if we just do color? Make sure we're not. Well, it keeps it kind of light. Yeah, let's do color. And I think I'm going to take all this. I'm just going to hide that for a second. And I'm just going to throw in some gradients that are kind of the middle value here. And I think I'll just do, I don't know if I want to do darker color and then just kind of throw them in there. And let it smooth out, you know. Again, I don't want to destroy that composition that we were working on there. But I want to just push everything back. At least I think that's what I want to do. I don't always know what I want to do.
got these little bits in here. Failed to clean up. Might be alright, but let's see what see what we get when we knock them out. Alright, and then let's do a lighter color. So we'll grab our other stuff here. And we'll start kind of pushing these. Back. zoom out a little bit let's adjust that a little bit Okay, let me zoom back in here. There's a couple areas we could push back a little bit more. I think that might be smarter to do with a curves layer. So we'll isolate this region like right here. All right, this is what I'm talking about right there. Maybe a little bit of that and then we'll flip that. Um, and then what I'm thinking is I just want to bring up the black basically and maybe condense this down a little bit but um, just want that to be a little bit cleaner You know, I can get two on the nose with, hey, I'm trying to push these shapes back. Um, don't want to telegraph your every move to the audience. Okay, and then we'll bring in all those adjustments again. So, this is what we added. These two, no, three actually. We did a darken, darken, lighten, and um, curves. Okay, so I think our darken, we can push back a little bit. Let some of that, you know, really high contrast come through. Just a matter of finding the sweet spot, I think. Some of it we want. Right, and then our lighten. 
That's okay. Um, let's, let's see if we can adjust it just a little. Keep some of that texture stuff. Um, and this, I'm actually going to mask out back here where we darken some of these up because I, I like some of those. Uh, details coming coming through. Um, same here. I think we need to mask our, our darken. Oh, that's normal. My bad. That's our lighting. Okay, yeah. So this is the one. Uh, might mask out this here. Here, as we're kind of following that line up, mask that out. Let's keep that last one there. Okay, so with um, Yeah, I'm tempted to push some of these values even even farther up. No, like so. To the point that this could end up going into that blue zone back there. So this were like brighter. Yeah, you know, like that. I think it just needs to be cleaner, perhaps. Probably painted would make more sense. This is going too far here, but I'm going to do it anyway. Let's see if it works. I mean, it kind of does. Go from there, there. Yeah, it kind of does. Um, 
I'll probably fade that back out. Yeah, debating where I want that to be. I like I like this midtone here, where there's like that shift in hue and there's like lots of contrast and it's, it's punchy. I also like it um, simplifying the composition. Uh, you know, here where um, those end up being kind of less contrasty. Of course, the composition was fairly simple before. I just think there was less depth when we had it like that. That's about 47. This one is 59. Put them together. You get a lot. Perhaps needs like another... Uh, might need another ship <laughs> or something you know uh, so I'm just checking the chat uh, Morris welcome by the way uh, Morris says oh, well you added the color after the fact that process always eluded me it's tricky um, the thing with adding color later is that it has a direct relationship with um, uh, with your value, you know, so you, you want to keep things in the mids so that you can um, have some leeway with color. But um, I think there's good ways, good ways to do it, wrong ways to do it. Um, I, you know, obviously, I haven't done anything yet in terms of localizing any any color. Uh, like I haven't uh, painted to say, you know, this part needs to be this color, that you know. Um, Right now we're just doing it like tonally, like um, we're basically handling the lights and the darks as different um, different tones. So that's I think how you get a nice mood, like a, a nice like feel for the lighting of the scene. Um, but if you're going for um, you know, actually painting it out where these things have different local values, then you got to do a little bit actual, you know, more hand painting. But you can, you know, you can build it up this way. So, for example, we could do, we could go like multiply and just do like a light color, maybe like a gray here, or uh, not gray. What color is that? Tan. We'll warm it up a little bit, you know, start bringing this into our um, ground plane here. And um, we'll get a different effect if we put this below everything, right? Which we may want to do. You know? um, let's go like a little darker and a little, maybe a little redder up here. The transitions. Um, do that maybe. Whoa! How did I end up there? Down here. Um, let's go with like a bluish, or you know, as we're going back into space. And 
and uh, and we're st still not even really painting it, you know, like uh, you know, brushing in the the zones that we want. Uh, let's go back into those kind of reds, warmer tones in here in the in the uh, in the clouds there, and then maybe like a warm tone up in the sky. Too much, so we're gonna go just barely anything. Just kind of, even that's probably too much. But um, I think we'll just push it all back later. Head closer to gray here. Let's soften this up. I would probably go ahead and take my smudge brush here and just start messing with these. Now we're getting into more, I mean, we're not quite painting yet, but now we're trying to get it to be uh, painterly, zoned off, you know, it's not just these soft smudges. Uh, gotta be careful smudging your way to victory barely rarely happens. Yeah, uh, I shouldn't say smudging. Um, I mean smudging can be rough too, but what I mean uh, is using really soft uh, gradient type things. I mean it can definitely lay a great base for you. And there are, obviously there are times where it's it's useful, um, but uh, if you just do too much, if you lean on that too heavily, then what you end up with is something that looks very kind of uh, computer airbrushed, which is, I say, not my favorite. Or whatever it's worth. I might not be trying to make work that's Eric's favorite. That might be a total dead end. I think we need to get this blue into uh, into here, into this shadow. So that it is uh, reading more like a shadow. Although, um, it's pretty dark already and we're in a, we're in a multiply. Could do color burn. Uh, I don't know. I like color burn sometimes. Depends on the day of the week. Um, let's see. Multiply. We'll do that. We'll lower the opacity a little, and then we'll go uh, color burn, and maybe we'll do color burn below that. Hmm, I don't know. It it, it uh, I don't know. we'll go full opacity, and then we'll lower the fill. And this, I'm hoping just to get this nice saturation kind of right on the transition between the, in the darks. I mean, that's what color burn tends to do for us. Um, might mask some of it out. Protect 
particularly in the distance. We don't need the we don't need the burn effect. I guess it's okay. It's okay here. I like it as a transition. Okay. Just a little bit more. And then we can we could probably handle that saturation with just a hue saturation layer. Um, increase the saturation. Not rocket science. Just uh, bump it up. Maybe adjust the direction of it. And then uh, we'll isolate this. So we'll knock out the the really dark areas. And let's see what that's doing. Okay, and then let's pump that like all the way up to see where it's affecting. So I don't know that we really need the blues to be pumped up like that. It's okay, I guess, but I'm, I'm thinking more we want to hit those reds and yellows. And we might need to adjust the lightness in order to get it to blend correctly. Uh, I think I'm also going to bring this up a little bit more. I don't really... Well, there's areas where I don't like what it's doing. I don't like what it's doing right there. In fact, maybe I'll just leave this. And then I'll just uh, reapply that mask. Like so. And then I think we need to take... <clears throat> we need to have this blue uh, reintroduced here. So we've got... We'll just paint this one in here. And maybe we'll do this as a lighter color. Okay, we'll get something that's, I mean, it really doesn't even need to be blue. I think if we make it uh, gray, um, then it's going to appear bluish. Um, against the, uh, against the warm around it. Let me change my brush to something a little cleaner because that one's got a lot of texture on it. I'm going to push that value up a little bit there. Blend some of this out in here so it's not quite as tense. Okay, but then if you're thinking like, okay, we want to actually bring in some local uh, local value or local color, um, that's where. 
we could do that. Um, again, we could do an overlay, uh, color burn. I actually kind of like just doing like a normal or like a darker color or something like that. So like if I wanted to go over the whites and just make this like um, yellow or something, you know? Um, we could leave the white in there and just have this be like an accent color, you know? So maybe it's uh, along this, this panel or something here. Uh, we got the bridge there. Maybe we want to draw attention to this component. Yeah, well, kind of lost the perspective a little bit on that. Uh, let's do... Um, and I actually, you know, I kind of like it being sparing, a little more sparing. I could go more... Um, you know, like we could just make the whole thing yellow. Uh, you know, like so. But, uh, I do think that having the colors be a little sparing helps, uh, draw the eye into specific parts and like to highlight to accent like parts of the ship I don't know kind of like both um, let's do instead of darker color let's do um, so we could do darker color and then we just live with it you can also do like uh, any kind of interesting blend mode and then just find out where your dark uh your uh, darker color is so like we could do uh we, we know that we only painted one value on there so then we can just uh, do blend if and then we just bring this up until we're you know to that value which seems to be like there somewhere all right and then we can just start playing with the blend modes and what this would do is this will give us um, it'll give us some uh, variation in the in the tone and lighting of it mm. can't say that I really love any of these though I kind of like it just being flat the way that it was hard light is okay um, but let's do let's do this again, and we'll do uh, get rid of the blend if thing. We'll do darker color, just like that. And let's see if we can blend these. Get the best of both worlds, right? Get a little bit, get close to this original color, but still maintain a little bit of that light that we that we got on the other one. So, okay, and then I think we could, uh, let's control click that. So we've got a, a rough mask and then we'll do, whoops, um, we'll do a new layer. I'm gonna do G for gradient. Put it in there and we'll do um, color. 
you maybe divide that's kind of fun um here let me mask that we can figure out a good blend mode for that but what i want to do is get something that has the color shift as it goes back in space kind of like it being a little bit darker when it goes back even though the the lights get lighter i mean the dark the shadows get lighter um i kind of like the idea of the um yellows getting pushed to uh to a different value altogether See what I mean? I don't know. It could be a fool's errand. We've been running those. Yawn. Okay, I think I'll push this back a little further. And then I might push this back even further. Um, and then I think we could take that mask, go into our either color balance or curves or hue saturation. We'll do hue saturation and we'll grab our yellows. We'll start pumping them up. And let's just try to find that the sweet spot. And then you can also take your hue saturation layer and change the blend mode on it if you wanted to get really fancy. Kind of like that. I wonder if that's doing anything. It's funny sometimes when you're like, when you do an effect that you're like, oh, I like that, and then you like hide it and you realize that all it's really doing is. Um, well, nothing. <laughs> and so it's, uh, turns out that you actually liked what you had before. Okay, so um, it is kind of neat to get some nice contrast, like with a color burn or linear burn. Um, you know, we get that. Uh, multiply is um, gentler with it, and I, I think I would probably prefer that in this case. And then I think it was lighten that I liked. I liked what it was doing. Yeah, I like what it's doing to the to the tone. Like it's just kind of toning it a little bit. It's not really um it's not messing with it too much. I like that. Now if we do yeah, multiply, then we're getting really into uh kind of ridiculously high contrast, which I don't really like. I think um maybe maybe I could live with having some of that contrast on the front of the ship but not on the back i want this to go back into space you know This uh, lighten layer, I could probably do that again. See what happens. It just kind of shifts the value or the hue over because that's what we did in the hue saturation. Um, 
All right, now what would be kind of neat that I do sometimes is I'll take all this and I'll put it below the adjustment layer. So um, this is where we started painting uh, things in. And actually, you know, I'm, I'm actually not wild about that. I kind of like it just being overall toned. Um, this doesn't make me feel like, uh, oh, this is super, you know, like, like it's hitting all the spots or whatever, you know, the, the uh, all the points that I want it to. It's just, it's, you know, it's just getting in an overall color tone. Um, it also does a lot of, it makes a mess of the uh, hue, or not hue, the value. And if you do, and this is where I would really caution with painting color later, is if you're going to do color blend mode, I mean, it's uh, it's not great. It'll, uh, it'll, look, it'll look strange. Um, and that's because there's uh, values kind of inherent in the color. So if the color doesn't match the value... Or vice versa um, it just really feels off <clears throat> and that's fine like you can you can uh, you can work it out but um, it it takes work um, looking at the chat again uh, do, do you ever use paint tool side it's uh, really good for line work um, no I have not I'll have to look that up um, because my line work is uh, lackluster, uh, especially on the computer. I don't, I just don't really use the computer for uh, drawing. Uh, and then we got uh, Best Boy Electric says hi from England. Hello. It must be six or seven o'clock in the morning there. I'm pushing 117 in New York here, so I should wrap this up pretty soon. Hmm. So what do we want to do? Uh, like I said, not you know I'm not wild about the color. It's okay. Um, I think I'll take this down so that we get more of this kind of like gray overtone here. And then, um, I'm going to grab all of this because this is, um, this is our adjustment, our color adjustment that gets us from gray to, to, um, any tone at all. And then... Uh, whoops. And then this here. So, okay, here's our. Here's it. And then this is our uh, color shift. Or rather, we'll call this background color. BG color. And then this is our ship color right here. All right, so if we go back, that's our black and white, which I kind of like, kind of like that. I'm going to just grab that all and condense it to a layer so that if we want to uh, put that back over top with, uh, yeah, then we, we have that as an option. Here is our uh, overall tone, which is, that's what I like right there. That's my jam. And then... We threw in the background color funsies, uh, and we can uh, we can make that work. But what generally what I would do, um, Morris, you asked about this. Like, if I put in color this way, I would then probably start painting over it. So if I intended to do this, this would either be like a much longer 
pro project or I would do the the color block in earlier in the process if I was like set on um, bringing color in to the whole scene um, but for concept art you you kind of get to cheat a little bit with um, with giving it an overall cast like you get this like oh this is the feel that we're going for um, it depends on the concept art like what the purpose of it that is but if you're talking about um, just kind of getting the overall feel of a, of a project then um, uh, then something like this is not it's not bad because um you know, that's what it's supposed to feel like. It's supposed to give you that mood. Um, but if you're actually saying, okay, this is what the colors of all these things actually need to be, then then that's a different story. Um, okay, this actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this back. I I like it just a little bit. Like it just gives a little bit of uh, variety, but um, it's too strong. So I'm gonna pull that that uh, darken. Uh, on the orange back and I'm going to condense this back down so that I've just got it as a flat uh, image and then uh, I was saying we could um, take our background color and put it behind our adjustments oh that's ugly never mind forget I said that that was a, that was a, that was terrible uh, maybe we can de be selective about that. Maybe we'll put our background color behind some of these color balances. Okay, now we're getting a little closer. Um, the reason that I would do something like that is that then you've got these other adjustment layers that are kind of homogenizing everything based on its light value. So... Um, yeah, let me give an example of that. So we'll, we'll duplicate this. So this is what we've done if it's just over top of our, our adjustments. We're going to put one between our adjustments here. Open that up. I think we can increase the effect of it. Now... Let's see, not that one. That one we can kind of leave. Or multiply, we can push up a little bit more. And let's do another uh, adjustment layer over top of this one. So we've got our hue saturation is um, kind of shifting things around. I think we'll, we'll nix that one because it's not being helpful. And then we'll go uh, color balance. So this is nice if you make a real mess of color, um, you're, you're adjusting uh, your hue, well really your color, both hue and, and uh, saturation, by its location uh, in the value scale. So if you get things looking messy, you can start to clean them up by at least coaxing them back together. If that makes any sense kind of like that still giving us an overall cast um, but now we can like make this sky I think if we go kind of blue with the sky um, I was actually thinking almost like a kind of want to contrast that yellow you know? but There were there were kind of two things I was seeing coming out of the image um, earlier. So here's one option where we've pushed it basically into this complementary where we got the kind of blues and the yellows, um, and we've got a lot of yellow in the scene. Uh, another version that I was seeing a potential for. So I go back to the highlights and I 
Uh, set these all to zero. Whoops. There we go. And then I think I was in the shadows when I was pushing this over to, yeah, these, these softer, you know, lots of blue cast in the scene. And then that's going to uh, set this ground for the um, for the yellow to really pop forward. And I'm actually going to move a little bit into the red a little bit here. I mean, it's not making it red really, but um, instead of being really, really, really blue, you know, and having this like harsh color contrast, which this looks fine, but it's you know it's stylized. Um, uh, getting these things closer to a, uh, a soft gray, and then you've got all these variations in gray tone. You know, some being um, slightly green, some being slightly purple, uh, some being yellow, uh, just a, just ever so slightly. And then you've got all this kind of what's being perceived as gray, but they're kind of bouncing off of each other. And, it, and to me, that's just what makes it uh, really uh, pleasant to look at. And it's subtle, too. Okay, something like that. All right, so then to compare these two, this one we set like this blue, uh, almost like not teal. Um, it's a it's a blue green cyan, I guess I don't know, uh, but it's a gray. So like a, a, a cyan gray background, and that allows the yellow. So this is going back to where we were, going back to that cyan background. That kind of lets the yellow pop out, and then if we uh, do this one then we've got much more yellow in the scene and this is more like a, a yin and yang like there's blue there's yellow and it's just all over the place you know um, blues in the yellow yellows in the blue um, and it's uh, this could be pleasant I think there's actually ways we could push this even further so like if we did like um, let's just do like hue saturation and we'll actually increase the you know that's how do we want to do this? I'm thinking we um, let's go by zone, I think, like by color zone. So if we do our our blues, and we'll expand this over almost into green. Um, let's bump that up. Okay, so that's what we're dealing with is right there, and I think if we um, push this back a little bit. And then, uh, in fact, let's, let's go into the green and desaturate the green as well. And then we'll go to our reds. And let's get these dialed in here. I kind of want to... Well, I don't think we can avoid getting into that yellow. I think we're just... That's just going to be what it is. All right, now this, I want to uh, shift... I think even more red and then increase the value a little bit and yeah, maybe decrease the uh, saturation and then um, and then I think what I want to see with this is uh, actually maybe if we shift this just to color mode, then it won't. Well, I don't know. It's pretty harsh. But what I really would like to see with this, and maybe we got to do another hue saturation, and that's just to lower the saturation uh, in the darks, so that we end up getting kind of back into that dark. You know, and then that will have to do a blend if. And we'll just go scooch it till we're happy. Something like that.
Okay, so let's zoom back in on that. This is where we were. Then we really push that contrast, and then we're trying to dial it in so that it's cleaner. And actually, let me get back to those yellows because um, I think I want to see a little bit almost more red in there. This is okay. I just uh, maybe less saturated. I don't know. There's something's just a little bit feels off. But uh, okay. So this other version that we had that was more of a blue cast. That one again. We could push that even further. And let's see if these guys do anything for us. I don't think. I don't think they're going to do much. It makes it a little bit more like pinks rather than uh, yellow. And that's the combination of the, the two of them. I could see this being like cut back a little bit. You know, like uh, blending the two together. Generally, when I do that, uh, like if I if I go one direction, and then I want to blend it with another one that I've gone another direction, um, what I will do often is uh, I will condense that all down to one layer, and then blend the those layers rather than blending. Um, a bunch of adjustment layers together. I'll like give myself a kind of a palette to work from. So I'll go uh, like this, condense this all down, like flatten it to a layer, and then I'll hide the work group behind it um, and go from there. I am going to wrap this up here. So I'm going to um, basically just make a decision on one of these and uh, we'll call it good. So uh, what we're going to do is take all of this. So I, this I named the work group. We'll hide that. And we'll bring in the ones that we flattened, right? Because we were messing with these colors. And then we can do like combinations of these. So that's our overall cast. Here's our uh, color. Let's uh, let's play with blend modes on that. That was kind of fun. That one. Subtract. Yeah, I'm tempted to just either do like darker color or normal, which basically looks the same. The only difference is. Um, under normal we lightened that up so we will just we'll just go normal and then um, let's hit that maybe we'll do like overlay and then we could knock out the, the ends right so that we're not really pushing the blacks to black we're not pushing the, the whites even farther up we don't want to do that I mean maybe a little bit maybe a skosh All that's really doing is increasing some contrast. Um, maybe we'll push these back even further. Because really just in the mids it's going to 
Increase the contrast there. I don't know. I don't know that that really uh, brings much to the table. All right, so now we've got this other um, you know palette that we put together. So we can do um, we can do like darker color. So only in certain areas it's going to come through. So like for example, if we liked all this background. Um, but we wanted to get that blue in there. Then we can just go to blend if maybe hit our like red and then like knock out where there's um, Let's go in the dark area. So we'll knock out the darker reds uh, Or let's see green So what we're doing is we're, we're taking what we had built up and then we're isolating what's allowed to filter through. So that's like just, just allowing that blue to come through. Um, and then we could maybe pump it up even more. Um, like. Yeah, what if we did a uh, like soft light would probably make it even more blue. That's going to lighten it up too much, so maybe we need to find another way. Um, we do like color uh, color burn and then like lower the fill big time. And it just lets us push that blue just a little bit more. You know. And I'm not saying that these are like the best decisions but these are our options when um, when we're building it up this way um, I'm going to duplicate this I'm going to just set it to normal because uh, I just want to see that baseline of what's what's a normal what's our normal image look like okay um, maybe we'll Duplicate and go like halfway there. I might just do this. Let's do 100%, and then we'll just do like. Uh, only have it blend. Well, let's do. You can invert these, which is kind of fun. Uh, so you can go like, I want to let everything in the light come through and then just work kind of backwards from the dark zone. So, what I want is this transition from kind of this dark gray to that red in the middle. those nice smooth gradations uh, okay and then we got our like overall tone ones right so like let's bring that one back in and just have a look see that was the color one so never mind on that uh, the overall tone was down here we'll bring that guy back up I like just the the contrast on that and uh, you know that gets lost a little bit so let's have a look at what we can do there um, there are some things to consider as far as like just compositionally I've got um, light not quite white but we're really close and then darks not quite black uh, but close enough and then a bunch of mids in there um, 
That's fine, but you know, we get that full range, and then these darks are basically black in there. Uh, so, ooh, I think what that does is it, um, it, it does kind of limit our options. So, like, what would be nice is maybe to bring all the darks up or all the lights into the mid mid zone um, which we could do just by doing like uh, I'll do a solid color go like mid some mid color here I mean this is gonna be a, a rough and dirty way of doing it but then we'll just do darker color and then we'll mask out the um, uh, the ship So that's our normal, right? Start to bring it down, 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 down. I think it needs to be kind of bluish to blend into that background. Maybe we just color pick. Take it, take it to that green. And then we could lower the opacity on that, but you can see what we're doing there is we're kind of getting away from the in insanity of like um, the super high contrast color everywhere kind of scene. And uh, bring that tone that back down. And so we can kind of meet it halfway where we still got those shapes that were interesting um, and some like light, but uh, now we're a little bit more controlled about it. And you can do the same thing with the with the dark, you know, so you just we'll duplicate this, you know, get rid of the mask. Um, we'll set it to a lighter color. Go full and then we'll uh, we'll just pick a a color that kind of seems like Maybe we'll lower the opacity on that. You know, so that we still get some blend. Uh, but in this case, I would probably bring the white up. So that, um, and actually, I'm going to mask out the center as well again. There. Um, maybe not that much. Uh, right, so what you're doing here is you're just trying to bring everything into these uh, kind of less less contrast in the whole scene, and it gives a base uh, to launch the you know the rest of the image off of. I think I would probably lean towards. This. Yeah, this one and then if I'm doing this I might um, allow some some more dark to come through yeah, I might knock this back a little bit too I don't know I like it. But I want to make it work. 
anyway, um, these are these are ways we can approach uh, bringing value or not value color into a scene um, without just you know doing a color blend mode. Uh, over a uh, black and white. Now I'm going to bring in just a little bit from this uh, overlay layer. Fourth, right there. Should it be light? Should it be darker? bit of blue uh, into the shadows here to uh, bump up the contrast. Uh, I don't know about that. I get too uh, too contrived. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's doing a lot. A lot of adjustments going on there. So I will go probably about halfway. That. Yeah, I'm not sure that I, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I think I like that. Yeah, 
because I don't, I don't think I need all this contrast here in the foreground. Like up in here. Um, I don't want that to go quite white there. Hammond and Holland. But I think that's probably the better choice right there. Give it a little bit of blue back there and then push this in. Okay, so um, I was going to do something. It was going to be something. So I was going to take this ship, right? Just grab it. And the ship needs buddies. So we're just going to do it the, uh, the cheap way. Copy and paste. Um, but one thing I want to see is I want to have them kind of uh, like cresting over this cloud or something, you know? Perspective is not going to be great. It's not going to be perfect. We're just going to have to deal with it. Um, do you, see, I kind of see this being like way back there, right? So, yeah, I'm going to lock the um, opacity on that and then just start bringing in this darker color, unlock the opacity, and then uh, add a little soft shadow there, maybe. Let's get the perspective uh, adjusted. It really should just be redrawn. But I'm kind of looking to wrap this up here. Yeah, I think maybe if it's like up higher. Hmm, I don't know. I'm trying to think. I don't want the uh, perspective to get broken, but, um, you know, compositionally, where do I want these things to be jumping out of the clouds or what? And this one will bring in some of these bright values as the sun is just catching a piece of it.
That white might be too much there. And then this other guy will adjust that. I don't like it. I don't like that guy. Maybe I just make him smaller. need more kind of tie-ins you know like something's gonna show this thing you know having burst through the clouds right let's do a different brush now it's not the one for this job um this guy here Maybe put little uh, trails on these guys here. Too much. The other thing too is that I kind of like them to be Again, counter change, have this bright value. Go into a uh, darker. And then we could come up with some kind of, you know, like it's displace the uh, cloud here. What would that look like? And then I think we can try to narrow these down a little bit so that they're, I don't know, I think it needs to have um, perhaps more Perspective, like a tighter perspective on that. So as to make it feel like it's uh, way back in space.
Hmm. Kind of want to darken that up in there and see if I can show, you know, in some way that like behind there is. Uh, structure to this you know, this vessel I don't know which, what's going to do that better you know whether to have like here's the cloud shape um, you know that looks like perhaps it's a little translucent or something you know and then behind you know, here and then maybe we have this kind of dark shadow going in there um, is that going to be any better than, uh, yeah, maybe we need to lighten this up then if we do that. So is that going to be better than, um, just kind of showing it obscured by the cloud? I guess we need to actually use the... Whoa, nope. So from there... To there... Yeah... I think I like... I think I prefer this a little bit more. And I think the thing is too dark, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and do a lighter color. We'll grab that red. And we'll just push that in there. And I think we need to get that, uh, that white really shining in there and clean up the silhouette because this like there's just like too much detail there I think is what's going on or too much attempted detail at least you know just does not need to be there And let's hit that, this uh, lighter color again. Push that even lighter. And maybe some more. Yeah, I feel like uh, I feel like this could use a little bit more in terms of um, well, now that it's starting to become something rather than just a, a ship in a scene, and I'm trying to get some other ships in there. You know, I'd like to um, envision it more. With um, uh, you know, with more of a story, like maybe there's a, maybe this is the contrails off of another ship, you know, or something uh, that they're chasing down.
you know, in the game, if we're going uh, home world style, you know, each of these, depending on which uh, uh, enemy type it is, it would be. Um, different colors, of course. Maybe this other one will do is a different uh different color. I don't know. Yeah, I kind of feel like we need to do the opposite of that. Like they you should, uh, which one? This one here should be hard light and inverted. I'm kind of tempted to. I shouldn't. Such a waste. Such a waste, but tempted to have this, uh, you know, transition into, um, uh, smoke shells, you know. <laughs> what am I doing? What is going on right now? It's picking up some other color that's not there, which I don't care for. Let's do this. We'll go new layer, pin it to that, and then we'll start bringing in our color.
Yeah, it's funny, I kind of don't care for this ship back there. Um, maybe we can just get rid of it. I mean, if anything, it's, it's too big. Maybe there. I don't know. I don't love it, but uh, I can live with it. No, maybe I can't. This feels so linear, you know, like do do. The way those two things go. Uh, where's that other They're all cresting out of the clouds at the same time.
Yeah, what am I doing? These don't make any sense. And they're kind of boring too. Like if um, if they were coming through with some kind of gusto, you know, that could be cool. Yeah, almost color picked up. That would not work. No, let's go with a dark. Uh, maybe mm, that might work for us. We'll go a little darker in there. With this guy back here.
Let's see. I don't think. I'm going to stick with this one here. I wanted to put another ship in there. Maybe we just... I don't know. Maybe we can make it appear as though there are ships in there about to burst through, you know. too complicated here um, so this is contrail where are you right there come on Okay, I think it's time to stop. I mean, honestly, the image itself, you know, you got all these other things going on, compositionally or whatever, but the image is really this uh, ship here. I mean, we could crop it something like that. Um, maybe zoom on just a little bit and get a little bit more. But then you get all of those kind of same elements, roughly speaking. Um, of the contrails, there's kind of a chase going on or something. Um, without uh, losing too much, I do like the uh, I do like the shadow here. You know, having that cast the shadow. Though I think we could nix that, put it right here. You know, um, it's all right. It's all right. Okay. Let me zoom in on this. Oh, actually, I think that's a half decent crop right there. So I think we'll stop it there. I'm going to go full screen. Oh, that's funny. Well, that's a half decent crop. Well, that's the whole image. Huh. I keep saying, sometimes you make a change and you're like okay yeah I think that's what I want then you look at it and you realize that you basically just returned to where you were uh, but okay um, I know it kind of went quiet there for a while and uh, that's like, trying to make this image work I guess in the end I, I did really like the um, the uh, image underneath let's go here to the original black and white with the um, with a little bit of uh, uh, toning to it that was that was probably one of my favorites but I think if I just switch this to luminosity and then lower it down we'll kind of get a little bit of we might be able to mix those you know get a get a happy medium so this all gets darker and there was just something about just how uh, bright those were. And that was nice. And it, um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, somewhere in there. It's hard to say.
Hard to say. Because I like the strength of that color there. Don't necessarily like the strength of this. I like the light of that. That's just too bright. Um, yeah, we'll go with this. All right. So I think that will do it for tonight. Thank you for watching. And uh, have a good night.